So we've worked out that we're going to need to add something to Ampere's law to deal with the case of capacitors. Ampere's law tells us that the line integral of the magnetic field dot dl around a loop equals mu naught times the sum of the charges inside it. But if we have something like a capacitor, the current coming in, and then two plates, and we pick as our Amperian loop a loop around here, we could bulge our sheet over like that, in which case this comes out, the current I is going through here, so that comes out as mu naught I, or we can just use the sheet down the middle, in which case there's no current coming through and that would equal zero in this form of the equation. Which doesn't make sense, we should get the same answer either way. So what we want to do is change the equation so it has something like some plus some constant times d magnetic flux by d time. That's by analogy to Faraday's law, that was the electric flux over t uh, that was the magnetic flux over time. Here we need the electric flux over time, the rate of change of that and some constant. And what we'd like to do is pick that so that for this sheet over here, we get the same answer as for that sheet over there, mu naught i. OK, so let's go back to our capacitor. We've got an electric field going across here. And the electric field in a capacitor, the magnitude of it is given by the charge on the capacitor over the area times epsilon naught. That was something that was derived in the previous course. OK, so if we've got that, what is the magnetic flux across a surface round down the middle here? Well, the normal vector is going to be in the same direction as electric field. So that's just going to be an electric flux. So the electric flux, we'll call it phi electric, which is going to be the surface integral over that of electric field dot n dA. It's just going to be this times A. So it's going to be Q over epsilon naught. But what we really want is a d phi by dt term. So what is the rate of change of this? We think it's going to be rate of change of this because that's going to be analogous to Faraday's law. So d phi d by dt is going to be, well, epsilon naught's not going to change. It's going to be 1 over epsilon naught dq by dt, rate of change of the charge on the capacitors. But that is just the current. Current is the rate of change of charge. Current is the amount of charge moving. So it's just I over epsilon naught. So what that's telling us, if you remember, we, ha we had that our equation was going to be that the line integral B dot dL equals, we've got mu naught somewhere of the currents, plus some constant d phi by dt. And we wanted this constant to be such that when our surface down the middle, it gave an answer that was just the same as this. So given that d phi by dt is i over epsilon naught, it means that our constant must just be mu, mu naught. So then in this case, where our surface is down the middle, this is zero, there's no coming through. So then we've got mu naught, sorry, constant should be c equals mu naught times epsilon naught. It's mu naught epsilon naught times i over epsilon naught, which gives you mu naught i, which is just the same as you get when you bulge your surface over here, so it intercepts the current coming in through that. So this seems to work. We finally have the complete equation. Our complete equation then, this is the Ampere-Maxwell equation, Maxwell's additions to Ampere's law, is that for a loop, magnetic field dot line element, there's a line integral around that, equals mu naught, and then all in big brackets, the sum of the charges going through that loop, 
plus epsilon naught times the rate of change of the magnetic flux through the surface. And the magnetic flux is just the surface integral of the electric field over that surface. And now we have the complete set of equations.